Welcome back to the channel, lads and ladies, and welcome to M3 Thunder. <laughs> welcome to my new hot box. I got this 50% off from a random uh, battle reward chest. So I decided to spend the 500 golden eagles to pick it up, and I have not been disappointed. At rank 2 in the American Premium line, this version of what is essentially the M3 Lee, or Grant if you ask the Brits, I suppose, is essentially the same thing as what you find in the regular tech tree. It does have a slightly different armor model on the upper turret, a little bit thicker in general and without the little micro machine gun turret on top. C'est la vie, que sera, sera. And I didn't do super well in it in this battle, but it really cannot be overstated. One, I'm getting tired of copy-paste tanks, and two, <laughs> you just, uh, you just can't go wrong with the M3 Lee. It's a baby Sherman in many regards, although an awkward baby. But with the 75 and the 37 mounted together, it has an incredible, ridiculous one-two punch. The armor is just thick enough that it matters in, um, in the face of lower penetration rounds and faced off against the British meta vehicles and German heat rounds. Yeah, it's not all that effective, but, eh, you know, number of bodies sometimes counts. And making corpses the way you do, I'm sorry, that's a miss, that's a misnomer. There's no corpses in War Thunder, no pixels are harmed in the making of this video game. It's all in good fun, honestly. People just get, they just get sleepy and they get right up again after the battle. But this is... Jeez, what is this thing called? It's the B something. B34, something like that. And it's very similar to the harpoon you find in the premium line as an event vehicle, only at a lower rank and a 2.7 battle rating. What do you get in that package? Well, in my case, a vehicle that has not been spaded, surprisingly but a very effective ground strike platform in all regards except for the mass of the ass. <laughs> this thing is a little bit chonky and every now and then it eats up a little bit more ground fire than you would want it to. But when it's not getting shot out of the sky it proves to be an exceptionally nimble medium bomber with fantastic engine power, overall good flight dynamics, Decent defensive guns, especially for its tier. Good survivability, again, especially for its tier. Although, nothing's all that survivable in the air these days, now is it? But, every now and then, you last a little bit longer than the Frenchy booze that are on your tail. As we get a nice pilot snipe there. And with, what is it, 12 100 pound bombs, something like that or a handful of 500 pound bombs available to be unlocked later as well as a couple of cockpit mounted offensive 50 cal machine guns this little well it's not little now is it but this adorable medium bomber provides a nice introduction to the more sluggish and yet more effective B-25 and PBJ series you'll encounter later on down the line. Like most things American, it excels in close air support and doesn't do poorly in an air-to-air -air engagement either. American bias, lads and ladies. It's these multi-role, multi-capacity aircraft that really come through in a mixed arms environment. Thanks to Pacific and Atlantic for <laughs> necessitating those things and 
we did just get our tail blown away it looks like that caught all the tail controls and we go straight down the way you do when a ZIS-12 targets you back to the what is this Grant <laughs> back to the M3 and into a battle where I'm going to show off the one-two punch capability of this tank to great effect. Now, I probably could have done a lot better in these few matches, but I just tend to shut off my brain and have some fun and play aggressively and stupidly. <laughs> Did you like that? What other tank can do that in? Not many. Even Das Neubafatzoik would have a hard time getting on target with those two. So, there are some advantages to the derpy setup of this firing platform. I'm sure you'll agree, but in case you needed a reminder, let's just, uh, let's do that again, shall we? Now, where is that pesky enemy? Ah, uh, I see one of them. Oh, there's two? Well, no problem for the casket for six brothers. <laughs> One and a two. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> you can see that at 2-7 against lower ranked vehicles, the M3 is a bruiser. It's a beast. And against higher ranked vehicles, well, you better start blasting. <laughs> Both guns have access to the low speed stabilizer that you find on many American vehicles at this range of battle ratings and uh, we're about to make a dumb mistake and wind up in the air again. That was a bit arrogant of us. I was sure I could bounce that shot. I was definitely wrong. And now Bacon Gaming will take over. This is our M3, uh, the Casket 46 Brothers, the Soviet USSR Lend Lease variant of the M3. And what's the difference? You're on the Soviet team. <laughs> That's the only difference. But yet again, this is a, it's a derpy, it's not quite meta, but it just hits so hard. It's a strange, odd vehicle. It's got all kinds of unnecessary extra bits that uh, Uncle Sam just didn't want to leave the house without. And yet in War Thunder, if you really get a feel for it, it's one of those strange vehicles that always stays weird and can perform fantastically. And that's exactly what we're going to see from Bacon Gaming today. In case you're one of the few people that's not aware, Bacon has his own YouTube channel of the same name and he has some of the best coverage of what's coming and what's going on with helicopters in the game of War Thunder along with just about everything else. So good for news and conversation. And now we'll see if we can't find something a little bit more spicy to talk about. Bacon definitely playing a bit more cautiously than I was in my own portion of the video. And that's going to pay off today. One of the things I've noticed about Bacon is that he tends to play a more careful playstyle. There's two types of people that tend to send me replays. And by the way, you're welcome to send me a replay sometime. And those people are either folks who play very aggressively or folks who play like you see Bacon doing now. They pause every now and then to take stock of what's going on. They check the map, they listen around, they spot where enemies are and where they're moving to. They make a few guesses in their head and then they move their chess piece to another position. You take your shots, you get your kills, and then you get out of the neighborhood. So what's this very aggressive play style that I see? Well, you still end up doing a lot of the same things. Tactical awareness is definitely essential for any successful mission. 
And yet, there are people that do not include myself. I'm awed by these people that can do all of those jobs in their head while they're putting the pressure on everyone around them and pulling their teammates in to a frenzy of victorious carnage. And that's not Bacon's style, and it's not mine. I'm, I'm just not mentally capable of being that busy. I like to wage my war at a gentleman's pace, sir. And that's something that I find in common with our guy Bacon. I've brought you this replay mostly uncut, which is why I've had the opportunity to fill it with some of my own nonsense. But here we go, aircraft coming in. The uh, turret mounted turret <laughs> coming into good effect there. And it almost looked like he got a 75 into that aircraft, but that can't be possible. Nobody flies away from a hit like that. Uh, I mean, generally they don't. Generally? Ah, see what I did there? <laughs> Why would he name tanks after Civil War generals anyway? I don't know. Maybe it's a generalization. But... In any event, I like the Abrams tank. That's a good one. Abraham's tank. And was that a little bit of replay bug there? It seemed like he fired, but the round was not visible. I've seen that a few times in other vehicles. Not sure I've noticed it with the M3, but it's definitely a possibility. If you're very, very keen, you may notice that things sound a little bit different in this replay. And that's because this one is a little bit older, I think. <laughs> I think it's been a while since Bacon sent this one in to me. And since I was making an M3 video already, I decided to show you some actually skilled M3 gameplay. Just to wet your whistle for this uh, special little tank. Little, okay, maybe it's not so little, but it's still adorable, okay? In any event, always nice to see someone having a good time in the old Lend-Lease equipment. And at 2.7, there's also the Lend-Lease P40. Uh, I think it's at 2.7. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It's a pretty strong aircraft for 2.7, but I think it is. It really is a good aircraft. As well as a few other golden birds and chariots to fill out your lineup if you're at all like me and you like to fill up your slots with premiums if not you've got the chica series of aircraft uh, as well as the uh the biplane no that chica is the biplane then you've got the i-16 which is essentially a biplane it handles like a biplane it flies like a biplane and it happens to have one wing <laughs> But very, very solid aircraft. Derpy little spud bird that's uh, all engine and a stubby little tail let on the back. Just, just adorable. Truly adorable, I tell you. And things are definitely heating up now. With already six kills on some foes who were distracted and others who provided an opportunity to show off the potential survivability of this M3. One of the downsides of Swedish APDS at low tier is that it is a rather small round and you need to be able to pick apart someone's crew or critical modules to be effective with it. Factoring in that the M3 has lots of crew and lots of modules and you have some of a challenge which are Swedish friend found out some time ago and I just got around to commentating on and now Bacon keenly aware of what's going on and hearing gunfire from one side of the battlefield now repositioning yet again and also checking his booty and indeed finding fruit he dug in his thumb and pulled out a plum and what a good boy is he. That's a 50 millimeters 
armor plate he needs to punch through and finding the angled side armor nonetheless a 37 and a 75 to do the Lord's work and what a clever boy he is again that one two punch of the M3 uh, with the American 37 starting to definitely lag behind in the 27 battle rating still finds itself with a uh, high muzzle velocity which makes it good for picking apart targets at medium range and a very fast reload rate uh, again very useful uh, paired up with the fantastic American 75 and a slightly shorter barrel version than you find on the Shermans and thus slightly less armor penetration I suppose at around I think it's 93 millimeters that's still plenty for most of the targets you'll face at this range of battle rating so one thing else that I've noticed is that you tend to see a little bit less of the Panzer IV F2 than you used to with it being up tiered or up BR'd to what is it 4.0 and that is entirely fair it's it had been at 3.3 one of the most overpowered if not the strongest medium tank in the game with nigh unrivaled firepower and decent all-around stats to back it up. Now facing the M3 much less often, it still makes up one of your most deadly predators, but it's one you run into a lot less often. In fact, uh, it must not be a 4.0, because I've seen one uh, Panzer IV F2. It must be a 3.7. Anyway. With the machine gun of all things, picking up his 10th kill against a Shkvisi boy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, I do suppose this is a good match in the Soviet M3. And once again, always a joy. I definitely have a soft spot in my heart for American tanks. I really love the look of them. And I fell in love with the Sherman back when I was playing World of Tanks. It's just just such an all-around good tank and with some beautiful lines to the vehicle as well. It has that mix of rugged and in-development look and some very deadly features to back it up. Uh, and that is just about that. What a beautiful ending for the match. But an incredible number of kills and three gorgeous iterations of the M3. I don't know if I showed you the regular Tech Tree version in this one. I think I might have cut that part out. And uh, guys, it's been a very long day. Uh, my marbles are still swollen up like tangerines after my surgery. So uh, I'm, I'm in pain. While I'm sitting and talking to you guys. So if I sound a little bit stupid. It's been a long day. And if I sound a little bit dumber than usual. Well you're welcome. Anyway as always. There's a link in the description. To my discord. Which is the best place to get a hold of me. And uh, we're looking for folks to play. In uh, a table gaming night. So I'll try and. You know what. I will commit to making myself available one night a week and uh, we can work it out when we're going to play some table games i'd really like that there's a game called tabletop simulator available on steam usually goes for around 20 bucks and it's one of the best deals on steam and that's how we can all play table games together anyway just a thought catch you guys in the next video Bye bye